mushroom picking in the forest near our house and Maya behind house. literally behind our house and Maya is getting a way better eye for chanterelles last summer she didn't see many of them I didn't see nothing no <laughs> but one note that I'm sure a lot of you people are thinking about when you're out mushroom picking is to which ones can you actually eat and which shouldn't you eat now I'm no expert I'm super intrigued by mushrooms but I can tell you that this mushroom right here should not be eaten. Now, how do I know that? Well, I use an app called Picture Mushroom and then you can literally use the app and scan it on the mushroom and it will generate information about that particular object that you've scanned and it will give you a breakdown of what the mushroom is called what the family of that particular mushroom is and also if it's edible or not which is a crucial point because there are mushrooms that are super super poisonous that you should avoid because me and Maya are super beginners when it comes to mushroom we're just keeping an eye out, out for chanterelles which are quite easy to find and they're very distinguished from other mushrooms so that's what we're doing today so a little tip this was my birthday present, one of many from Max. And when you're... What is it called? A Swiss Army knife? Yeah, Swiss Army knife. Um, so when you're picking mushrooms, don't pull it. Uh, keep the roots, the mycelium in the network. And just chop off the heads. So that way they can sprout out again versus not having any roots to grow. I know you might think Max and I are trying to be cool, but this is actually for ticks. <laughs> So the ticks fall off the hat. Oh, look at this. Max, look what Max got. That's a big one. Hold on. Uh, you want to be able to chop the... There you go. Oh, See, the yeah. root is still there. Yeah. So that will give life to other chanterelles. That's blueberry stains. <laughs> it's so nice walking in these woods. It's like carpet. It's so like soft because it's like the branches fall and then the leaves fall and then the moss grows and so there's like layers of like air underneath the branches and leaves <laughs> and it's like so soft I mean obviously not barefoot for my soft feet but it's really cool okay let's see this forest Take a look at this forest. We are headed to another location to find more chanterelle mushrooms. But on our walk, smoke it on. Jackie likes eating them too. But these ones are for me, Jackie. Hmm. So this is what we used to do as kids. You pick a straw. You like make a, a skewer. <laughs> <laughs> So many. <laughs> that was our neighbor, and she put us to shame. <laughs> she put, but she's been doing it for hours. We saw her at 11, and it's now, oh my you goodness, we'll, it's five. What we'll do is what we'll walk by, because we've seen a, a few of them in the ditch. Yeah. So we can walk up there a few hundred meters, and then we go inside here, back to the road. What okay, yeah. Ooh, we can oh, we can have breakfast tomorrow with or you know we can toast and like you know caramelized how, chanterelle yeah, grilled cheese with mushrooms you know how freaking good yeah <laughs> so we just bought um uh bread like homemade bread from this baker in Svato so good and i got fig jam and chanterelle mushrooms hand picked two hours later you ready for that anticlimactic moment well to be fair to be fair we didn't spend that much time like how like the sun is going down now so what is that like two hours yeah 
<laughs> That's enough for like two. This yeah. is for breakfast. Yeah. Two toast. <laughs> Once we caramelize it, it's going to shrink down. <laughs> one for me, one for you. Uh, so it was just a warm up. <laughs> it's just a warm up. I'm actually even surprised that there were any at this time of the season. I thought that all mushrooms were coming beginning of fall. So that's good to know. Maya, what's the takeaway? Rain. Oh yeah, uh, rain brings new life. <laughs> Next time it rains, we're gonna hit the forest again and yeah. be first this time. Yeah. So we remember what I told you in the beginning that we only chop the tip of the mushroom so that it gives room to grow out again. So next time it rains, it will grow out again. So yeah, but again, breakfast, we'll show you how to cleanse them too. And breakfast. I'll show you how, oh, it's gonna look so good and taste so good. 11 minutes later. We were headed home and then I saw this from the road. Jackie move. Don't step on it. So we have enough for three toasts now. <laughs> OMG. These are huge. Jackie, go. Huge, huge. Here. Here. This spot, like, I'm t it's the roadside for me. <laughs> it's the roadside for me. And you guys, oh wow, Max has a bunch. Yeah, we found the jackpot. the not so very funny part. Now I have to remove the parts that are like, now I have to check that there's no insects, that there's no dirt, unnecessary dirt. Uh, usually I have a brush for this. Don't know where the brush is. Don't have time to look for the brush. Gonna use it. I'm just gonna have a knife. Gonna have a knife in my eyes. So let's start doing this. Here they are. Just put a bath with the chanterelles and flower. Sort of moving this around, and the flower is supposed to help pulling down the dirt and I can already see the dirt is coming off them. The struggle of being a big man in a small house. <laughs> so, how's it going over here? Trying to get most of the dirt off. Little dirt never hurt nobody. True. Little dirt never hurt nobody. That's very loud, I know. <laughs> So now I'm evaporating the mushrooms. Um, you put them on a dry pan and then it sort of, yeah, like I said, evaporates. You kill a lot of, uh, um, what's it called? Bacteria that are in them. So whether you wanna prepare them or put them in a the freezer, um, you should always do this. And if you, if you have a lot of mushrooms, heat them up uh, separately so that they're not like all pushed, squeezed into one pot. So once that's done, we're going to probably use these ones for all. See the... Let's 
So that's it. I'm gonna toast, and I'm gonna throw an egg on this. Thank you, my love. You're welcome. I hope it tastes well. We didn't have the butter. Still the best mushrooms out there. Isn't it like eating meat? Wait, 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 wait. Let me just fill you in on what I'm actually doing. I'm in the car now and I'm about to drive a few meters to this beautiful forest where I'm gonna pick some blueberries. And since this video is about being inspired by nature and how you can be creative with food that actually grows on your land or in the forest. Luckily in Sweden, we have something called like free of roaming and say Allemansrätten. It basically allows the civilians to walk through forest freely, um, despite it's not being your own land and despite it's being private or government or whatever it might be, you're allowed to walk as much as you want. You're allowed to pick as many mushrooms as you want, as many blueberries as you want, but you know, just be respectful. I think the, the, the rule of the thumb is just to be respectful of nature and whoever owns the land so so yeah we have nature everywhere where we live so why don't we use the food that grows in nature and uh, be creative in our own cooking like we will use the blueberries for salads for muffins for smoothies we have smoothies every morning and it's healthy and it's great i'm going to document this and i'm going to bring some nice blueberries back home to maya who's now taking a rest and uh, probably hopefully make a nice little smoothie in the morning or something well or just put in the freezer and have uh, throughout. So, all right, let's 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 have a look. A quick update: I'm here at the spot, and look at all these blueberries. so much like this continues all the way you can't barely see it but the bushes are reaching all over this i mean i'm literally just i'm literally just surrounded by blueberries and as a little tip i use this little scoop it's pretty simple pretty straightforward see i already got so much and it saves you so much time and it gives you so much more berries you can use this for lingon and blueberries too lingon is Lingon is actually easier because they're more sturdy. So when you pull and rip, the berries don't break. Sometimes the blueberries do break. Uh, raspberries is, is, is a no-no because they just splashes. But, so this is how it works. You find a bush with a lot of blueberries and then you just sort of squeeze these grids in between the branches and pull. And voila, loads. So sweet, so sweet and good. Mm. Can't finish all of them though. I could survive here. I wouldn't die. Bears live on berries and mushrooms. I have everything I need here. I got water right there. I got mushroom. I'm coming back, Maya. Don't worry. I'm coming back. I'm just. Oh my god, it's so good. I'm just starving, and I pan <laughs> and I panicked for a bit because I was like, I don't have any food. But then I realized I'm. I'm literally here to pick food. <laughs> oh, I'm done. I'm going home. I fell into a swamp and I have water. I had water up to my knees. You can hear the... So, I have to go home. 
but I'm pretty done anyway. I'm, I'm starving. I want to go home and do some cooking. But I'm so glad that you followed me. You came with me on this little adventure and that I am coming home with a few liters of blueberries. Man, but I'm gonna come back though. I'm gonna come back for the lingon and raspberries too. Oh yeah, this is enough for today. Whew. We're in the crib. I We're not doing a home tour anytime soon. <laughs> Maybe we should. But anyways, um, today I will be making zucchini bread. We have so much zucchini. Uh, we're so grateful that we even have zucchini to bake. I feel like because we came home not just late in the season, uh, we also are more focused on getting our home and our preparing for our baby than we are tending to a garden so for next year I would ideally like to plant more um, and not just more but having like the compost will be done from last year we can use that nutrient rich soil but for now like the zucchinis and the mint <laughs> um, seem to be the things that are popping so uh, I was posting on IG stories if you don't already follow me follow me at IG stories um, and everyone was like zucchini bread zucchini noodles uh, what else was there? Oh, eating the flowers. I did it in a salad, but I didn't do it for the longest time because I'm like, which flowers can I eat? Because we need the bees to pollinate those flowers. Anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna make the zucchini bread and you're gonna join with me. So I'll be using Sally's Baking Addiction. Addiction? Oh, so good, right? So we have the remains of our Zucchini. If you leave it on, it just keeps growing and growing. Since I'm about to go in, I should put my overalls on. <laughs> I bought these and I didn't realize how much more I was going to grow. Let's get into the shredding. I got this and this. So, it's been chopped. Now, the funny thing is in the US they measure in cups everywhere else in the world <laughs> measures using the metric system. So I had to download the app, one cup. I'm gonna do a little bit more. It's not enough. It's supposed to be zucchini bread. Not bread, but zucchini. I used to bake as a kid. On the weekends, I would bake like chocolate chip cookies. That was my favorite. And I had a go-to recipe. Nice, was it squishy? It was squishy. Sometimes I'm in the mood for squishy cookies or crispy cookies. Which one do you guys prefer? But back then it was squishy. Nowadays, I like my crispies. <laughs> but that was when I was a kid. Then I stopped and then I met Max. When Max and I started spending more time together, I picked up on this thing he would do, which was so funny. He would randomly say, I feel like pie. I feel like cake. I feel like this, I feel like that. And he would start baking. And I was in <laughs> such awe, because I'm like, who does that? Like, it's so far from my, my world of like, I want a cake, I'll just say, oh, I want a cake and I won't do anything about it. Or I'll go buy one. I won't go bake one. Yeah, so I just thought that was very cute. So here I am, following in Max's footsteps and baking. <laughs> it doesn't have to be exact, I don't think. I never do things exact. <laughs> I like do it, I'm like, mm, I don't think so. I disagree. Ugh. Please, 
177 degrees Celsius. Thank you for that for 45 minutes. Okay, I'll put 40. I like this. I can't use timers on my phone because I'll just ignore it. And I'll put this in the oven. It's complete. I don't think I put enough um, baking powder, baking soda. Here it is. I'll have to ask Max what he thinks. I feel like it could be fluffier. It's very dense. Darn it! Ah! Red, it's the best. And this time it came out perfectly fine. I don't know what you're talking about. She's talking about like a sturdy uh, consistency. I think it's like super dense. I like it. I like it fluffier. No, this is perfect. Mmm, yummy. I'm gonna have some. I mean, I'll still eat it. <laughs> you don't normally put this much chocolate in, do you? No, because I was always out. Oh. I always had leftovers. I could have put less, yeah. We've cooked a lot. But every time the food is done, we don't even think about filming. We just eat. <laughs> so, you enjoyed. Oh my god, that pie though. That pie you made was so good. The zucchini bread is done. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. I preferred lighter breads. Like fluffier, like with like air pockets or something. When I met you, you didn't like cooking at all. I still don't. I feel like you do. I have ideas. <laughs> I like. But I just wish it would just do it itself. So this is a pesto and we made it with our basil. <laughs> we have a bunch of basil. This is one, two, I should plant more, right? And then we have a bigger one in the greenhouse so it's basil I think that's the only thing from our garden <laughs> mm, it's more inspiring to to cook I think when you have when you take from your own yeah even if it is just basil yeah it feels better than buying basil and you think oh I have basil what can I make <laughs> kombucha so I think what I've learned in this journey, whether you're eating from your garden or the grocery store, it's just important to appreciate food. I think you have a lot of respect for your food when you know where it comes from. Just being grateful. I think it's important to pray over your food, whether you believe in whatever or not, just gratitude. Speaking over the things that you want to nurture yourself. Yeah. And on that note, go away, bees! Bye! Bye! <laughs>